Here's a game that we invented to scratch our family's itch for dungeon and adventure games that our girls have been binging on lately. We're going to call this the Multiplication Dungeon. It can be real simple, but you can also scale it up for more thrills. Hi, I'm Leanne and I want to inspire families to learn through play. So if this is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. Like I said, the basic game is very easy to play and then you can add some more thrills to it and spice it up for your learners or keep it real simple and quick. We are going to use a deck of UNO number cards from 2 to 9. If you've got a regular deck of playing cards, that will also work too. You'll also need a regular six-sided die. You could also use an eight-sided or even a 10-sided one if you would like, depending on the range of your learner's multiplication tables. Starting from the center of the table, we're going to lay them out in a growing spiral, turning the corner after every consecutive card until you get a playing area that is as large as the space you have got or until you run out of cards. Our players are going to start in the center. They have been trapped and are trying to escape the dungeon. So to get out, players have to choose between three creatures to outrun. The one that they are standing on, the one ahead of them, or the one behind them. All right, we're heroes, so we have special powers. To see how far players go, they roll the die and then choose which card to multiply that factor by. We will be moving ahead based on the product numeral in the ones place. Purple player's turn, she rolls a five. Six times five is 30 in which case she would move a zero, or seven times five is 35. And then she would move five spaces, which is what she's going to choose. One, two, three, four, five. Then it's orange player's turn. Six times three is 18. Seven times six is 42. And eight times six is 48. So she will start here and move eight spaces because eight times six is 48 and there is eight in that one space. So she can move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's purple player's turn. She has rolled a three. She can move 15 steps if she outruns five, one step if she outruns seven, or six steps if she outruns two. So she will start here, so she will move six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's go back to the orange player. Orange player has rolled a four. She can do four times four, which is 16, and move six spaces. She can do four times two, which is eight, and move eight spaces. Or she can do four times eight, and move two spaces, which is 32. So she's going to try and go outrun two. Four times two is eight, and she moves eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's go back to purple player. Purple player is rolling a six. She can, well, at the back is an eight, and where she is is also an eight, and eight times six is 48. So she could move eight spaces, or she can start from nine. And 9 times 6 is 54, in which case she would only move 4 spaces. So she's going to outrun 8 from where she is and move 8 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's go back to orange player. Orange player has rolled a 5. 7 times 5 is 35. 3 times 5 is 15. And 6 times 5 is 30. So she could move 5 from 7. 5 also from 3 or 0 from 6 because she's going to choose 5 times 3 which is 15 and move 5 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Purple player has rolled a 4. So 6 times 4 is 24, 5 times 4 is 20 and 8 times 4 
32. So she could move two spaces up here. Or move four spaces from six. They both come up to the same, so she's just going to start at eight and move up two spaces. Eight times four is 32. One, two spaces. Now it's orange player's turn. Orange has rolled a two. Four times two is eight. Two times two is four. Two times two is four. So she's going to outrun the four. Four times two is eight and move up eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And she has escaped the dungeon first. Purple player has rolled a one. She can start here and move four spaces. So four times one is four. One, two, three, four. And then she might roll again. Seven times three is 21, in which case she'd only move one. Four times three is 12, in which case she'd only move two. Eight times three is 24, and she would escape the dungeon. And that's how you play Multiplication Dungeon. So here's where you can add some thrills and spills. Like I said, our girls have been on a big role-playing game and dungeon crawling binge. So following our theme of dungeons or labyrinths, uh, we added some fun treasures and encounters to be found along the route out. And these add more intrigue and uh, possibly more strategy. Here are some examples that you can try too. You could wrap some raisins or Tic Tacs or candy in little foil pouches that players can eat and root out of the cave. Or instead of a dungeon, you could pretend that you're Hansel and Gretel and follow your breadcrumb trail home. In which case, I would leave uh, goldfish crackers along the way. We could also add a couple of play gemstone treasures that the players can find on their way out. Or gold or treasure coins, uh, whatever it is that suits your child. Whoever gets the most treasure wins the game as opposed to who escapes the dungeon first. You could use one or two of these suggestions or all of these suggestions to build up a full-on elaborate multiplication dungeon delve. A kid-sized learning dungeon. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you get to try out this multiplication dungeon and have lots of fun playing and I will see you in the next video. Yay!